toddler having trouble in the bathroom? Are you worried about their irregular bowel movements and the discomfort they may be experiencing? How can you tell if it's just a passing phase or something that needs attention? Join us as we explore the world of toddler constipation. What are the signs? What causes it? And more importantly, how can you help your little one find relief and regularity? Let's dive into the world of toddler constipation and find the answers you've been seeking. Once upon a two-year-old daughter, Lily. These two were inseparable, and Nina's heart swelled with love for her little one. But lately, something had been troubling Nina. Lily was facing a recurrent problem, constipation. It was not a friend to any toddler, causing discomfort and distress. Lily's bowel movements had become infrequent and painful. Her little face would scrunch up with discomfort, and she would sometimes cry when she needed to go. Nina couldn't bear to see her daughter in pain, so she decided it was time to seek some guidance. She scheduled an appointment with their trusted pediatrician, had been a source of support and knowledge since Lily was born. The day of the appointment arrived. Nina and Lily entered the pediatrician's welcoming office. It was a place filled with colorful toys and cheerful paintings on the walls, designed to make children feel at ease. He is, a kind and experienced pediatrician, greeted them with a warm smile. Nina, with a sense of determination, began to explain her concerns about Lily's recurring constipation. Lily, clutching her favorite stuffed bunny, peeked out from behind it. He listened attentively to Nina's worries. He then turned to Lily and said, Hello, Lily. It's okay, you don't have to be shy. We're here to help you feel better. Nina felt reassured by his kind approach. He continued, Nina, recurrent constipation in toddlers is quite common, and it's something we can work on together. First, let's talk about Lily's diet. Have there been any changes in what she's been eating or her eating habits? Nina explained that Lily had become a picky eater and often avoided fruits and vegetables. He nodded and said, it's not unusual for toddlers to be selective about their food, but a balanced diet with plenty of fiber is important to prevent constipation. We can discuss dietary changes and strategies to encourage Lily to eat a wider variety of foods. He also talked about the significance of regular hydration and how it played a significant role in maintaining healthy bowel movements. Encouraging water intake is vital. Make drinking water fun for Lily, and it'll become a good habit. What is toddler constipation? Toddler constipation is when young children have a hard time pooping. It's a common issue. Toddlers with constipation might poop less than twice a week. When they do poop, it's often hard, dry, and can be painful to pass. Who does toddler constipation affect? Many toddlers face constipation, and it's more likely to affect those with developmental or behavioral challenges. Kids going through potty training. How do I know if my toddler has constipation? Toddlers can't always express if they're constipated. Look for signs, such as, pooping less than twice a week, passing hard, painful stools, unusual postures or movements, like avoiding pooping, belly swelling or discomfort, nausea, blood and poop, poop in underwear that looks like diarrhea. What causes constipation in toddlers? Toddlers may become constipated because they hold in their poop, causing it to become hard. This could happen because they're engaged in play and don't want to stop. Embarrassed to use a public bathroom. Worried that pooping will hurt. Not developmentally ready for toilet training. Other causes can include a low fiber diet, lack of fluids, certain medications, health conditions affecting the anus or rectum, birth defects, metabolic disorders, hormonal issues, illnesses or stress. How is toddler constipation diagnosed? To diagnose constipation, the healthcare provider will ask about the child's symptoms, diet, and health. Perform a physical exam to check the abdomen and rectum. What tests may be done to diagnose constipation? Most toddlers won't need tests, but they might be recommended if an underlying health condition is suspected. These could include abdominal x-ray, blood tests, stool tests, urine tests, 
bowel function test. Rectal biopsy. What complications can occur due to constipation in toddlers? If constipation isn't addressed, it might lead to fecal impaction. Encapresis, inability to regulate stool passage. Anal fissures. Rectal prolapse. Hemorrhoids. How is toddler constipation treated? For many toddlers, home remedies can help, dietary changes for more fiber, drinking more water, encouraging a regular bathroom schedule, temporary pause in toilet training. What foods should my toddler avoid if they're constipated? To prevent constipation, toddlers should avoid low fiber foods like ice cream, bananas, applesauce, rice, fast food, chips, cheese, processed foods, too much whole milk. What medications can be used to treat toddler constipation? Consult the healthcare provider before giving any medication. They may suggest probiotics, fiber supplements, electrolyte solutions, stool softeners, laxatives, glycerin suppositories, enemas. How can constipation in toddlers be prevented? To help prevent constipation in toddlers, ensure a fiber-rich diet with fruits and veggies. Keep them well hydrated. Establish a regular toilet schedule. Encourage physical activity. What is the outlook for toddler constipation? The outlook is usually good. With dietary changes and more fluids, most toddlers can have regular bowel movements. If left untreated, constipation can worsen, so it's important to address it. When should a child see a healthcare provider for constipation? If constipation persists for over two weeks despite home remedies, see the healthcare provider. When is toddler constipation an emergency? If a toddler with constipation has a fever, vomiting, rectal bleeding, blood and stool, a swollen abdomen, constant abdominal pain, or weight loss, contact the healthcare provider immediately. They discuss the importance of regular physical activity in helping with bowel movements and reducing constipation. He encouraged Nina to find enjoyable activities that would keep Lily moving. As their conversation continued, Dr. Matthews concluded, Nina, I'm here to support you and Lily through this. If dietary and lifestyle changes don't show improvement, we can consider other options, like fiber supplements or medications. But let's start with these changes and see how Lily responds. And remember, if you have any questions or concerns along the way, don't hesitate to reach out. Nina left the pediatrician's office with a sense of hope. She was determined to make the necessary changes to help her precious Lily overcome this challenge. His guidance and their unwavering love, Nina knew they could tackle this recurrent constipation and bring back the bright smile to her daughter's face. Their journey to better health had just begun. And so, with a clear plan in place and a compassionate pediatrician by their side, Nina and Lily embarked on a journey to ensure that Lily's recurring constipation became a thing of the past. They were determined to make the necessary dietary and lifestyle changes, and together, they faced this challenge with strength and love. But their story doesn't end here. If you want to follow Nina and Lily's journey and learn more about parenting, health, and well-being, make sure to subscribe to our channel. You'll get access to valuable insights, tips, and heartwarming stories like Nina and Lily's that can make a difference in your life. Don't miss out on the opportunity to be part of our community. Hit that subscribe button, and let's continue this journey together. Your support means the world to us, and we can't wait to have you with us on the next chapter of 